Hello everyone, my name is Adrian Zimmer. I am a developer at the Computational Systems Biology Department of the University of Kaiserslautern, currently working on the data plan project. And today I will talk about homogenization of workflow metadata without restriction and user re-education. Before we get started, let me first give you a little background about what we do at Data Plant. We are an NFDI consortium of plant research consisting of around 40 members from various fields, such as plant research, information in computer sciences and infrastructure. And we aim to enable collaborative research in plant biology according to the FAIR principles. This means we want to go from traditional lab notes over digital information to finally the knowledge graph, maximizing data discoverability and reusability. And one way we want to achieve this goal is by developing a research data management system called the ARC, which is short for Annotated Research Context. ARCs act as a scaffold for managing research data, including metadata as well as computational workflows. And one important feature of ARCs is that they are executable with minimal effort on any type of system. So for now, you can picture an ARC as a folder containing annotated research data and computational workflows. And in this talk, we're taking a closer look at the challenges of handling the workflow side of an ARC and how we solve them. So, as I mentioned, one core aspect of data plan is that we believe in the FAIR principles. However, with multiple metadata standards and more than 300 workflow systems available, achieving workflow fairness can be a difficult task. That is because, on one hand, we don't want to restrict users to a specific workflow language or system, because that would mean many people would have to learn a new standard and rewrite all of their workflows. On the other hand, we do need to negotiate a metadata standard that serves as a single point of entry in order to achieve homogenization. We believe that CWL is the perfect standard to solve all these problems. Now the question is, how can CWL be used to homogenize the workflow landscape? Of course, with CWL being the point of entry, the user has the option to compose their workflows using only CWL. But what if the user wants to use a different system like, for example, Galaxy or Nextflow? One approach would be to write CWL translators or exporters for every workflow language or system. But that would mean a lot of work. Additionally, it would also be very hard to maintain because if either language changes, the translators and exporters would have to adapt to these changes. We also cannot expect that the creators of the workflow systems are interested in or have the capacity to implement a CWL exporter. Lastly, we lose all the benefits like for example computational resources provided by service platforms like Galaxy. So approach number one is not an option. Therefore, we came up with a different idea, which is to use CWL to delegate the data to the workflow system that the user wants to use. That's the approach we went for. What this leaves us with is that with CWL we have a single point of entry that gives the user information about the input and the output of a workflow and allows us to seamlessly combine different workflow systems and standards. To illustrate the feasibility of this approach, we selected Galaxy as our workflow system of choice. Let's take a look at what we want to be able to do at the end of this example. In step 1, we want to use the excellent UI of Galaxy to create and download a workflow. In step 2, we want to place the workflow inside the arc. Then in step 3, the arc should be able to execute the workflow on the Galaxy server and retrieve the resulting history in step 4. So step 1 is already provided by the Galaxy platform. As you can see here, I've created a simple workflow that takes an input file, looks for the word Galaxy and replaces it with CWL. We can download this workflow by pressing on the wheel in the top right corner and selecting download, which will give us the workflow as a file with the ending .ga. So with step 1 out of the way, we can now proceed with step 2 and place our workflow.ga file inside the arc. Now let's take a look at step 3 and 4. We want to be able to execute the workflow on a Galaxy server and retrieve the results. Because we want to use CWL to facilitate this, we need a command line tool that handles the interaction with Galaxy. And to our luck, there's a tool named Planemo that does exactly that. Planemo is maintained by the Galaxy project and has a command called run, which takes the workflow.ga file as well as a YAML file containing the inputs to the workflow. It then tells Galaxy to run the workflow and returns the results when the server is done. So, to make the Galaxy workflow executable, we created a two-step CWL workflow. 
For step one, we created a command line tool called the CWL Galaxy Parser, which takes the inputs from our CWL job file and writes them into a YAML file that Planemo Run can understand. In step two, we invoke Planemo Run with the input parameter file from step one and our workflow.ga file, which has to be located in the same folder as the Galaxy workflow.cwl file. Planemo Run then executes the Galaxy workflow and returns the history when it's done. Now, there's one more issue with this. The command line tool description for CWL Galaxy Parser will of course have to change depending on the inputs of the Galaxy workflow. This means the Galaxy user has to know CWL to modify the CWL Galaxy Parser command line tool description to their needs. So we need to fix that. Just to know where we are right now, we will take a short look back at what we are already able to do. We are able to create and download a workflow using the Galaxy web interface. We can easily place it inside of our arc next to the Galaxy workflow.cwl file. We can execute the workflow on a Galaxy server using the two-step CWL workflow I just described, and we do get back the resulting history. So the only caveat is that in order to make step 3 work, the user has to update step 1 of the CWL workflow to accept the correct inputs. And that leads us to the final part of this talk, which is using Galaxy workflow metadata to auto-generate the process. So if we take a look inside the .ga file, we can see that it's plain JSON describing the workflow and its inputs. We took advantage of that and wrote a very simple tool using TypeScript, which is the inputs of the .ga file and generates the necessary CWL files for us. CWL generation itself is powered by CWL TS Auto, which is a relatively new TypeScript library for working with CWL documents. It is auto-generated from the CWL schema using a TypeScript code gen which we created for the schema salad tool with the help of the CWL team. The library has Node and basic browser support, so you can already use it in client-side web apps. So if you want to check out the project, I've put a link on this slide and it's also available on NPM. Now let's take a look at what our tool actually does. The tool is named Galaxy Workflow to Arc, and as you can see, if we execute it with our .ga file, it gives us a nice photo structure. These photos include the workflow that I just described to you on the previous slides. We also get something called a run, which is a parent workflow that serves as an entry point and allows us to chain additional workflows behind or before our Galaxy workflow without modifying it. As you can see, the tool also generated us a job file named run.yaml. This file contains template values for every input, so before starting the run, we still have to enter the actual values. But other than that, this is ready to be used. So how would we execute this? Now, in order to execute the generated arc, all the user have to have installed is CWL tool and Docker. After that, all we have to do is execute this nice command right here, replacing the value of arc galaxy API key with our personal key. The workflow will then start and we can observe this on usegalaxy.eu by looking at our histories. When Galaxy is done, we can see the results appear inside of our run folder. So, to summarize, we are left with a four-step process to run a Galaxy workflow inside of an ARC. That would be to create and download the Galaxy workflow, use our tool to generate the necessary CWL files, place the result inside the ARC and specify the inputs in the job file, and start the workflow. And that's it. I've put the links to the relevant code repositories on this slide in case you want to see actual code to the concepts I just described. And that wraps up my talk, so thank you for your attention and have a nice day.